Imagine you're a driver at Cricklewood in the winter of 1960. You've been assigned to the most modern locomotive in Britain, diesel electric, 1,200 horsepower, the future. And you're standing there watching a Stanier Black 5 steam past you to work the Condor because your engine won't start, again, because 17 out of 20 are broken because nobody told you that the windscreen might fall out at 75 miles per hour. This is the story of the Class 28 Metrovic, a locomotive that became so problematic it was quietly moved away from the spotlight. To understand how this happened, you have to go back to 1955. British Rail had just announced the Modernization Plan, a massive multi-year investment to transform the rail network. Steam had to go. Diesel was the future. The problem was that Britain had virtually no experience with mainline diesel locomotives. The United States had that experience, and their approach had been simple, buy proven technology and standardize. British Rail chose a different path. They invited multiple major British engineering companies to submit designs. The idea was that by testing different types side by side, you could select the best one for mass production. That was called the pilot scheme. Metropolitan Vickers from Manchester was one of those manufacturers, and they came up with something unusual. The Metrovic Type 2 was unlike anything British Rail had seen before. Starting with the engine, where most diesel locomotives used four-stroke engines, Metropolitan Vickers chose a two-stroke from Crossley Brothers. The Crossley HSTV delivered 1,200 horsepower at 625 revolutions per minute. A Maybach engine in the Western class ran at idle almost as fast as a Metrovic at full power. The engine was an evolution of a design that had sat in patrol boats during the Second World War. In British mainline locomotive service, it was effectively unproven. Then there was the wheel arrangement. Metropolitan Vickers had originally designed a conventional Bobo configuration, four powered axles divided over two bogies. But when the locomotive was finished, it turned out to be too heavy, and weight issues forced a redesign. The solution was to add a fifth axle to one of the bogies. The result was a keel bow arrangement, three axles on one end and two on the other. It became the only British rail class to use this configuration. The cab had curved wraparound windscreens at the corners of the locomotive. It looked modern and gave the driver good visibility. Later accounts suggest those windows struggled to cope with the vibration of the Crossley engine. Early test runs quickly revealed problems. Within months of entering service, the reports started coming in. Maintenance accounts mentioned shattered pistons, cracked cylinder heads, oil deficiency, excessive liner wear, and big end bearing failures. Fuel and water lines fractured from the vibrations. In some cases, the engines even worked loose from their mountings. Then there were the flames shooting from the exhausts, and some crew members described fireballs. The Crossley engine already had a reputation for catching fire in ships and buses. Now it was doing the same in locomotives. The problem with the windows also became clear quickly. Crews later recalled that the curved windscreens worked loose from the vibrations and sometimes fell out while running at 75 miles per hour, the locomotive's maximum speed. In March 1959, the Metrovics were assigned to the Condor, British Rail's first containerized freight service between London and Glasgow. This was the flagship of modernization, 400 miles without a locomotive change, and it was marketed as a next-day service. Regulations specified that if a locomotive was found defective in the depot, steam locomotives had to take over the train. At one point, most of the Metrovic fleet was unavailable for service. The Condor was often taken over by steam locomotives of the LMS Black 5 class, and reports from the period suggest service reliability improved. What followed was a year of negotiations between British Rail and Metropolitan Vickers over who would pay the bill. The locomotives were stored at Trafford Park, while the arguments went back and forth. By mid-1961, there were only two Metrovics that could still run. Eventually, the entire class went back to the factory at Dukin Field. The engines were modified and the curved windows were replaced with flat glass using conventional rubber seals. The locomotives returned to service in 1962, but not on the Midland Main Line where they originally belonged. 
British Rail sent them to Barrow and Furnace in Cumbria, away from the main lines and away from higher profile duties. They worked there on local passenger services and on freight trains along the coast and in the Lake District. By then, the Metrovics were widely regarded as a troubled chapter. There were plans to save the locomotives. Proposals were made to re-engine the class using English electric power units. The Irish had solved their Crossley problem by re-engining. The Australians had persevered through hundreds of modifications. British Rail chose neither path. They chose the scrapyard. In December 1967, the first six Metrovics were withdrawn from service and stored. This was seven months before the last steam locomotive would run on British Rail. By September 1968, the entire class was out of service. The rest were scrapped by the end of 1969. Except one. D5705 was taken over by the research division at Derby for their Tribology test train, later converted into a carriage heating unit, and in 1980 purchased for preservation. Today, it sits at the East Lancashire Railway, where volunteers are working on a long-term restoration. The Crossley engine turned out to be a disaster, not only in Britain. Ireland had ordered 60 locomotives with the same engine and had exactly the same problems. They solved it by rebuilding all 60 with General Motors engines. Those ran until the 1990s. Australia bought 48 Crossley locomotives and carried out extensive modifications to keep the machines running. There is one more footnote. In the mid-1960s, Reverend Audrey published the book Mainline Engines, featuring a new character called Boko, named after the wheel arrangement but reversed because that sounded friendlier. Boko carried the number D5702, a number from the Real Class 28 series. In the stories, Boko is reliable and helpful. The real D5702 was built in 1958 and scrapped in 1969. In fiction, the fat controller found a way to fix the mechanical problems of the Class 28. In reality, nobody found that solution. 20 locomotives were built, 19 were scrapped, one survived because someone happened to need a test object, and there is a cartoon character that is friendlier than the original ever was. So next time you see an old photograph of a Class 28, remember that driver at Cricklewood, standing in the cold, watching steam do the job his diesel couldn't. British Rail never admitted what went wrong. They just moved the problem to Cumbria and waited for it to disappear. It took 11 years, 20 locomotives, and one very patient cartoon character to outlive them all.